Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I want to show you how to take an Android phone or device and turn it into an IP-based security camera. And uh, this will allow us to stream and record the video and audio. Um, you can view the streams via a web browser or a VLC on a PC, or you can actually even use another Android device. Um, this method will have support for multiple cameras and motion detecting. And um, resolution support goes up to uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, some phones will actually go a little bit beyond that, but the higher the resolution, the more network bandwidth it's going to use, and the more space it's going to take up to record. And uh, this is going to be a completely free solution using open source software, and all the apps are going to be available free on the Google Play Store. Alright, so the hardware we're going to need for, to complete the steps in this video are an Android device with a camera, uh, a Windows PC for the uh, recording and motion detection, and then you need a wireless network to tie it all together. The software I'm going to be using in this video is IP Webcam for Android, and that's going to turn our phone or device into the webcam. Uh, TinyCam Monitor Free, which is also for Android, and it enables us to view our webcam and record from another Android device. And lastly is iSpy for Windows, which is an open source application that will allow us to view and record multiple cameras. And it also has all kind of features like motion detecting and uh, stuff like that. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the hardware I'm going to be using in this video. So you notice off to the left here, I have a little tripod. And um, this is an optional step, but it's a nice little feature to have to get good angles and securely hold the phone. And I also have the dock here. And um, you notice that I drew a little hole in the bottom so I can mate it up to the top of the tripod. Again, it's just all for flexibility and, and shooting and angles and stability of the camera. And then I have a um, Motorola Droid 3, and I'm going to be using that as my IP webcam. And then I also have a, Sam a Samsung Galaxy Note 2, and I'm going to be using that to demo what it looks like to view a webcam from another Android device. So this is what the phone looks like in the dock and on the tripod. And you see that it's nice and stable, and it also gives me some flexibility in choosing the angle. Alright, so let's get started setting up the camera. So you notice this is the Motorola Droid 3, and I actually have a Bluetooth mouse hooked up to it, just to give you guys a clearer idea of what I'm doing and not have my finger all up in there. So if you notice at the top here, I have the Wi-Fi on, and I'm connected to my local area network. And now let's go to the Google Play Store. So you notice the uh, application that I have up is IP Webcam, and uh, this is what's going to turn our phone into the webcam. So you go ahead and download and install that, and uh, it is free. And uh, yeah, just grab that, get it on the phone, and uh, let's go ahead and launch it. So you'll notice we have all kind of options here. We can uh, set the resolution of the video streams. Higher is not always better. Um, it can suck up a lot of bandwidth and really slow the phone down. And you can set the resolution for uh, still photos. Uh, there's options for quality. You can set the orientation. Uh, you can use the front-facing camera if you want. You can actually set a uh, FPS limit, which is good if the phone's overheating or having a hard time running all the time. Uh, and you can actually set a login and password, which is nice. Um, and you can see, too, that you can set what features required the username and password to be used. The default is all of them. And I do recommend setting that. And then the uh, default port you see is 8080. And you can change that. You can uh, enable and disable audio, uh, prevent the device from going to sleep, which is good because some phones will uh, shut the application off if it goes to sleep. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and uh, start the server up. So if you notice at the bottom there, it gives us a web address, and that's the address we're going to use to connect to the device and view the streams. And it also tells you how many current connections there are. On the top left, there's a button that gives you all kind of help files on how to connect to the device and view the streams and whatnot. And then there's an actions button on the top right that allows us to stop the server and do some basic functions. But that's it. The camera is now up and running and streaming. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the stream. So I, go, I went ahead and put the camera where I wanted it, and I'm now on my Windows 7 desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up a web browser, and we want to type in the IP address of the device and specify port 8080 by doing colon 8080. And uh, this is the same address that it gave us at the bottom of the IP webcam app. And you see that it prompts us for a username and password, and it successfully logs us in. And we have all kind of options of how we want to view our stream. You can do uh, VLC, you can do Java, you can do JavaScript. Let's go ahead and try out the VLC one. So I'm just going to open with VLC and click OK. So you see that it prompts us for our username and password. I'm just going to enter those, click OK. 
and we see that the stream is indeed working and um, you see there's not really a whole, whole lot going on there but um, at least we know that the stream's working so I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of that and uh, let's try another method and let's go ahead and try the JavaScript one and you see that it says this will work on the uh, PlayStation and Wii but uh, it's the same thing just viewing it a little bit different way and uh, let's go ahead and go back and you see there's a couple how to's for um, how to connect up to uh, the tiny cam monitor for Android and the IP cam viewer and uh, if you notice this URL down here, the MJPEG one, uh, this URL becomes important later on when we're tying into third-party software. All right, so now let's go ahead and see what it looks like to stream to an Android device. So I have my Samsung Galaxy Note 2 here, and I also have the Bluetooth mouse hooked up to it. And um, I'm going to be using the TinyCam Monitor Free, which is available on the Google Play Store. So uh, you can just go ahead and add another camera by clicking the Add Camera button but I already went ahead and set up my Droid 3 on it. So we're just gonna go and check out the settings for that. Now, um, there are some important things to note here. For the camera vendor, you wanna select IP webcam for Android. And then we can cancel that. And you see there's all kinds of options for other cameras as well. But, and we're gonna set the camera model to generic. And then for the host name, you wanna set the IP address of the webcam, which is the address that it gives you at the bottom of the uh, IP webcam software and we're going to use the default port of 8080 and then you can also set your username and password settings if you're using those here and you notice that there's other options for audio motion detecting recording where you want to record to and uh, other settings for like SSL and stuff like that but that should be it and let's go back and let's check out the live view and you see that we can successfully see our camera and if you go ahead and tap on that, it'll go full screen, and uh, we see the world's sleepiest dogs. But uh, that's it, so we now have it successfully streaming to another Android device. Alright, so for the last part of this video, we're going to go to install iSpy. And you can go to iSpyConnect.com and download it for free. It's open source software. And uh, this is what we're going to install on our Windows machine that's going to allow us to record and enable the motion detecting to record from our IP webcam. Alright, so once you have the software installed, go ahead and open it up, and on the top left hand corner you'll see the add button, and we can add our IP webcam there. Now you can add all kinds of other webcams as well, it doesn't have to be an Android one. So, um, and you see it asks us for our username, password, and the MJPEG URL. Now, to get the, MPEG, the MJPEG URL, we go back to the IP webcam that we logged into earlier, and we want to use this URL right here. So you can just copy and paste that into there, and that's it, that's all it takes to get hooked up to your webcam. But uh, I already went and set mine up, so I'm just going to go ahead and discard this. Alright, so let's go take a look at the Droid 3 feed that I've set up already. So you just right click on the feed and go to edit, and we see all of our properties for the camera. So on the camera tab, you have options for like the timestamp, the max frame rate. You can enable the audio or just tell it to ignore it if you want. And there's motion detecting tab. You can adjust how much it records and when. Um, there's, you can also set up alerts, you can set it on like movement, and you can set the triggers and stuff like that. Um, there's the recording tab, you can tell it to not record at all, or just record on alert or motion detection. Uh, you see that I'm using the uh, MP4 profile, H.264. Uh, there's options for uploading the YouTube, scheduling, storage tab. This sets the directory that it records to, and you can also enable storage management to uh, set the maximum amount of data that you want to record, as well as a time frame for how long you want to hold on to it. So if you notice on the bottom pane there that it actually just caught a video based off the motion detection. So if we double click on that, we can see the recording and you notice that there is a timestamp on the top left there. And like I said, this was video that was captured because the dog started moving. So let's go ahead and close that window. And um, you'll notice up at the top there, there's various other settings for like uh, accessing this program from the web. You can add plugins. Uh, you can access your media. If you go to the files, it'll take you to the actual folder that it's saved all your files and content to. And that's all there is to it. You now have a pretty robust solution using some free open source software and an old camera phone. Hope this helps you guys out. Thanks for watching.